Hi and welcome back. In our previous video we finished the process of booting our bare metal app and connected to it via the mini UART to see the console output. In this video I want to start the process of switching the exception level that the code runs in. The exception model of the ARMv8 architecture is laid out as shown in this diagram. Each exception level provides a different level of access to system resources. Each exception level is a different level of privilege, essentially. The current level of privilege can only change when the processor takes or returns from an exception. So these privilege levels are referred to as exception levels. Each exception level is numbered and the higher levels of privilege have higher numbers. The Raspberry Pi firmware boots up in EL3. It has a boot stub which performs some additional initialization and moves into the hypervisor level, EL2, before passing control over to the kernel. An OS kernel typically runs in EL1 and any application that it executes runs in EL0. Let's start by printing out the value of the current exception level when our code boots up. Before we get started, I want to show a, um, something I have here, a printf.h and a uh, printf.c, which, which I just pasted into this project from uh, Sergey's tutorial. And you see it's developed by this person here. So I just took the code as is, and I'm not going to go through it in detail. It's just regular C code. So, but in order to use it, we're going to need to actually initialize it with our... Uh, or UART send. So let's first uh, let's see. Put we're going to create a put C function here that takes a void pointer and a char. Now we're going to ignore the ignore the first because we're just using UART, and I'm doing this same thing that I did in our send string, where if we send slash n, we want to slash slash r as well, and then we're going to send the character. So in order to initialize it, well, we first need to uh, include the header. So we're going to call this function init printf. Uh, the first, again, the first uh, value we can just put zero null, and then we put in our function, the name of our function that we just created there. So then we can actually change any of these UART send strings to a regular printf that every C programmer is familiar with. And it'll support all the formatting that everybody expects. And we can actually go ahead and build this and just show this working. I'm going to actually split the terminal here. I'm going to clean it version 3 make in this other split terminal I'm going to run the screen command to connect to our uh, our Raspberry Pi so once I take the SD card out put it in the Raspberry Pi and boot it up there we see the boot up process and there we have the Pi bare metal OS initializing or Raspberry Pi 3 done. Just to show that it still boots up the same. So let's create this utility function for getting the exception level. We're going to call it get EL. And what this is going to do here, we're going to use MRS x0 and current el is the name of the special register to get that value from it and then we're going to left shift it to get the actual el value and return so now let's just add a add it down here somewhere let's put a slash in up there So I'll say exception level and then percent %d, and we call our get el function. And we need to define it up here. Let's do 32. All right, so 
so now we're ready to rebuild and run this. And you can see exception level two. And now if you're following along with Sergey's tutorial here, one thing you'll notice is this kind of breaks things because when you go into lesson two here, if you go down here, he's actually expecting you to be in exception level three. And that's because the older versions of the Raspberry Pi OS would send it to, to uh, exception level three. But if we go here to the tools section of the Raspberry Pi GitHub code, there's this code called ARM stubs. If we look at the ARM stubs 8, that's the one that handles V8. We scroll down here, we see the start location. Just, just to show you here, you don't need to understand this code, but you see here we have a switch to EL2. So it's switching to EL2 and then it calls the primary CPU goes to this kernel 32. So this is where it's invoking the kernel after it's in EL2. And it's also doing this secondary spin for all the other um, CPU cores. But we really don't want to do that. We want it to be back in the firmware level. So let's go ahead and create our own ARM stub here. So this one will just do really simple initialization and essentially just pass straight into the kernel without spinning the extra cores and um, switching to EL2. So we want to just take it straight from the firmware essentially. So what we're going to do is actually create a separate application called the ARM stub and uh, we'll create a, a separate folder here for it. We'll call arm stub as the separate folder. And we're going to have our own source and uh, build directory as well under here. Let's move that build directory back. So we're going to have our own code here for this separate build module. We're going to call it arm stub.s. So in here, what we're essentially going to do here is start with our start section. And we're going to use W0 to load the location of our kernel, 30, kernel entry 32 and branch to that via the 64-bit register. And we have some organization here we're creating in the file 0xf0. There's this specific um, value called stub magic that the uh, firmware needs to find. It has to have this exact value in that exact location or it's going to consider it to not be a valid ARM stub. So this is, we're just kind of taking verbatim from that original ARM stub code. And then we also have here an ARM stub version, which is, uh, which version number is just a word zero. So now we have our actual location of our kernel 32 entry. And this is where it's going to jump to to start executing the kernel, which is going to be the value 0 to x0. So it's going to start from the very bottom of our, uh, fr from the very top of the binary file. So let's update our make file here. We need to create a couple of things. I'm going to be lazy here and not add a bunch of extra variables. So I'm just going to do arm stub build arm stub s dot o. So I'm referencing our s file from the source. I'm going to make the directory if it doesn't exist. So now I'm going to run the GCC against that dot s file with our options the same as before same the same as we do to create our our uh, dot o files in the main application so now we actually have the arm stub itself 
which we're going to, of course, rely on this .o file. Let's see, we're going to run the ld command. This time it's a little different, so we'll do it in section, section dash text, section dash start equals dot text equals zero, saying it's starting right at the very top. And then we have arm stub build arm stub dot elf. It's our output file. Arm stub build arm stub s dot o is our input. So now we're going to run the object copy to take that elf file and convert it into a binary object, same as we did before for our main application. arm stub dash new dot bins so it doesn't conflict with the existing one. Then we're going to copy it to our boot, boot mount and call sync just to make sure the SD card IO is complete. So let me see, let's, let's just make clean here. Remake the main project, and let's make the arm stub. Something's messed up here. Let's see. Dot glob. Okay, yeah, I just used the wrong word for here. This glob should be global. There you go. Let's make again. Oh, one more error. Let's see. Okay, see, I figured out a problem. It's this file here, this should be dash O, because that's our output file. Okay, so now let's make, and we copied everything and it all worked. Um, uh, yeah, we need to update config.txt. So config.txt, we want to say arm stub equals our arm stub dash new dot bin. So this will run our new arm stub code. And now let's Fig.txt gets copied over, and let's go ahead and try to boot this in the Raspberry Pi. So I'll take the SD card out. Here we go. Running it again, and it's a little garbled up here. Let's see. Yeah, you know, I think this Visual Studio code is not good for uh, running terminal commands like this in here. Yeah, as, as you can see, some of the text is, it's kind of out of sync. So let me just re, just change this and go into the uh, a Linux console. Okay, so I remove this console here. I'll open up my bash terminal. Now I'm going to run it in here. And let's boot up the Raspberry Pi with our new code. And see this looks much cleaner and there we go exception level three which is what we wanted to get so i think that's enough of, for this video to get us started on working with exception levels in our bare metal application in the next video i'll go over the process of getting our code to boot into el1 if you enjoyed this video or learned something useful from it Please like and subscribe or post comments with any questions you may have. And thanks again for watching.